you can do it. Don't get the answer. Excellent. Okay, everybody. Jérôme Etienne. Yeah, this is me. Hello? All right. Tea query by fan. <laughs> it swears me sharp. Well, this is a pointer of this show, and I can make you blind with this. All right. So, tea query. What is tea query? That's, um, uh, well, that's a library to do 3D. It's basically 3GS plus jQuery usability. On a, not an additive. All right. So, who am I? Jérôme Etienne, I maintain this blog. Learning 3GS, if you want to learn 3GS, that's a good place. All the many other stuff. All right. What is tQuery? That's a thin layer on top of 3GS. That's basically you got 100K for 3GS itself and uh, on, uh, a, only 8K for tQuery. This is an important part. tQuery doesn't try to be smart. It tried to be as dumb as possible. So you got a different API compared to 3GS and uh, different default value, but you got the exact same semantic. Nothing is stored in there, nothing is, nothing is smart. All right, it's the other way, I'm not yet used. So more um, precisely, let's say, you, that's an extension system on top of 3GS. It's quite important because currently you cannot really extend 3GS. There is no mechanism made for that. So I made this one. And I choose to clone, let's say, not really clone, but copy, mimic jQuery API. Why? Because jQuery is used by a lot of people. And uh, those people does not know WebGL. This is part of my goal, to bring 3D to non specialists. So let's see how I try to do that. So yeah, some marketing, which is funny. <laughs> You want to know WebGL, good news, you already know it, you just replace G by T. That's a car salesman, because obviously that's not really true, but that's a goal that I try to have at least. So WebGL for jQuery enthusiasts, or WebGL should not be harder than playing with Lego. Maybe one day, maybe one day. All right, so what is possible on this is our touristic pop? 40 lines of JavaScript, you got this on top of all the library, 40 lines. So you can play, you got a small car, you got some shading, you got, I will not bother you with the technical aspect. And this is 40 lines. And by the way, I got tutorials which explain, how, which explain to you how to do that. This one is 20 lines. When you move the guy, I guess you recognize him. Got sunglass, everything. Got some solar aspect. It's pretty cool. After that, we do that. Oh, this one is quite scary. I'm not sure I'm gonna make it work. Secret ingredient. So you already heard about WebRTC with Michel. So what you see here, that's WebRTC on my back. And uh, this is the ball. Unfortunately, that doesn't work too much because I got so many spots on top. So as you can almost see, I localize ball on top on the, oh no, that's real hard to do. This racket is moving with it. So I can play when I got the other one, but uh, the green doesn't fly too much with uh, all the light. It is bad because at home it works really well. All right. <laughs> Basically, oh, the little window like that on uh, recognizing the pointer with the flashy colors, I call that augmented, augmented reality. No, uh, augmented gesture. I'm going to talk to you about that. So, have you noticed? On red line for this whole game, 20 line for that, 40 line for that. Almost lying when I say that, right? Well, a bit because obviously you got all the plugins, everything. So, why is the code so short? Mainly, first, you got the Shane API of jQuery, so it's pretty cool because you can do many stuff in one line. I'm reasonable when I say 20 line, I don't have an infinite chaining. And the main advantage, in fact, is the plugins. 
plugins avoid recording repetitive elements, or most of graphic stuff are repetitive. Usually we do cut paste. I should I choose not to or do plugins. So plugin do makes the code shorter. That's pretty cool. You don't repeat yourself. And I got a conversion of our configuration. Rail people can know these kind of things. That's the same principle. And uh, this is what produces a short code. Short code got various interest. Faster death time. So you got cool stuff faster. Pretty cool. You type less code. You learn less code because you don't have to know everything. Most of the knowledge is inside the plugins. And you have less time, so you cost less. If you do games, you want to reduce uh, development time. And it's less error prone. What I mean by that is if you tap 20 line, you have you it is most likely that you have less bugs than if you type, I don't know, 200, 2000. So 2000, you got more errors, less code, less errors. This is kind of shaky as a comparison, but uh, I like it. So let's do some code. This is what I call the minimal page. What you got here, believe it or not, that's a full HTML page. And uh, let me show that to you. This full HTML page, you don't see it because um, the color are not too good. Doesn't do much, but it does work. You got a torus and you make it move. Pretty good for only six lines, if you ask me. And that's a valid HTML5 page. That's pretty cool. That's a, a minimal page slash boilerplate. All right. So I believe that saves that already. So what is jQuery now that we have seen some example of it? You got three JS powers that, um, the, let's say, I, I don't like to say the best, but the most actively developed um, library for WebGL for those who never tried WebGL, that's super low level, very, very low. Something like to display just a cube, you need maybe, I don't know, 1,000 line minimum. Just a cube with some texture on top. So you need a library. That was my point. Significant community on top of 3GS, so that's a good stuff. And uh, jQuery API usability. Why to copy jQuery, jQuery, and not uh, Dojo or whatever other library of the kind? Mainly because the market share of jQuery is overwhelming. Nobody beat that. So this is good when you want to bring the 3D to non-specialist. You want to eat as many non-specialists as possible. All right. Oh, and oh, yeah, basically another good thing is the plugin ecosystem of jQuery. It is quite good as well. So I hope by the way they are doing plugins. This way I hope that many people will do plugins for 3 gs All right, so that's the extension system. So that was the very origin of it. You, we wanted the extension system for 3 gs So I did the query for that. With plugin in theory, you can do plugins. After that, you share your work. People build on top of each other. That's the open source. That's all good. Currently, we don't do that. WebGL people basically take big chunk of code and do cut paste, which is not too efficient. And you need to know what you are doing when you are cut pasting 500 lines. So, white jQuery, I explained that already quite a bit. Well, yeah. The ecosystem, quite interesting, very lively, very popular, and it matches the goal to the non-specialist. It is pretty cool. Oh yeah, people who know jQuery will learn jQuery in no time. That's another car says bug, but uh, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> so how is it different? It is with uh, 3JS because is that completely a new library? where I will need to build a community, build the example, build the documentation. No, this is just a thin library on top of 3JS. So you got 3JS, 3D JavaScript library. You can render in WebGL, obviously. Most people know that. But you can render in Canva or even in DOM. In the DOM element, um, well, DOM element, you cannot render much. But you can actually render in Canva. 
I think my micro is going away. So why this library? Many back years that's uh, most popular on, well, I'm quite involved in it, so it gives me help when I know it. BigQuery on JavaScript sitting in a tree. Great, I get that key thing. Um, oh yeah, BigQuery got a single dependency, which is 3JS. Now this is more about the architecture of the library. Because you got a single dependency, that's pretty cool and easy to use. My microphone got trouble. Here we go. And, um, oh yeah, so basically you got TQuery on 3GS and you can go from one to the other. I do not try to jail anything when I do that. For example, if you are using 3GS for your project, but you want to use only one plugin of TQuery, you can do that. It's, it's simple. The other way around as well. If you got a tQuery project, you can uh, do pure 3GS at one point, and after that, you merge them both. The integration between the two is very, very simple. It is quite important for me not to jail people into, into tQuery. So, we have seen what is different, now what, remain, what remains the same. There's no change in semantic. If you know 3GS, you will learn tQuery in, I don't know, 30 minutes, no more. There is nothing smart in it. It's um, only a new API. I really want to keep it that simple. So new function, new API, and uh, an easy plugin system. Very, very important. The plugin system is what gives the result that you have seen. So I copy jQuery. I copy quite a bit. I'm not sure that's that useful. Sorry, watching the time. I speak a bit too fast. Does this work? Okay. So why copying jQuery API? Mainly because that's so easy for people to learn. They already know jQuery, that's the assumption. So you got um, very important for us, at least. That's very, very important. For the API, we got two principles. We copy jQuery whenever possible, and uh, sometimes we go out of it for some simplicity or stuff that doesn't make sense in 3D, that makes sense with the DOM 2D. But uh, really, that's the authority. It is very important. So let me show you how similar it is. Key aspect, key aspect of jQuery, you got a DOM tree, well, normal in every page. You got the chained API, ID, classes, CSS-like selectors on DOM element. Probably other aspect, but uh, both are the big one. Believe it or not, the DOM tree we already got in 3D. Sorry. Uh, we already got in 3D. Simply, we don't call that a DOM tree. We call that a 3D scene. And this 3D scene is already present in 3GS. This is just a change of word. In the DOM um, world, let's say, you call that a DOM tree, and after that, you call that a DOM element. Each element is a DOM element. In 3GS, the DOM tree is simply called a scene. On 3GS, called an element, 3D object, object 3D. That's most of the work already done for us. So now we provide some code. tQuery, full class, scale to translate. That's gonna select all the 3D elements which are which are the class to class, scale that by uh, set the scale by two, so double the size, and translate that to one on the left. So by x one zero zero, and uh, pretty easy to do. ID class, same stuff. Here, tQuery create cube. We create cube. We set the ID. We set a class. We, have, we can even set the data, that's some, it's a new feature in jQuery, and uh, you set the data Goom, Goomba. I have uh, no idea what I was thinking with this, ex with this example, but you set the data Goomba, and you can set all that in uh, each element. It works pretty well. Once you have set all that, you need to select them. You see, you do that exactly the same. So for class and ID, we saw that in the previous slide. So the previous, way previous slide, this one, full class. Here we just select all the elements which are in full class. 
Here we have some selectors which are based on the geometry, exactly like your um, element, your DOM element can be, you can do jQuery body or jQuery span or anything like that, exactly like I have written here. You got the same in jQuery. So other CSS selectors, you can compose them exactly like jQuery. So I want to select all the cube inside the object which are of class bar. No sweat, you can do that. Oh, I have a look, look at that. This wonderful stuff doesn't, oh, okay. The color doesn't show, unfortunately. Let's keep this. Here, you can have um, DOM element. Quite interesting, by the way. The DOM ele element, so you do, you select your element, your 3D element. Here, you do one click, and you're gonna execute this. So let's hope that this one works, yes. So we got some code, and every time you try, you click, it doubles the size. Why does it do that? It's because here, well, you create a world. Here, you create the cube, you add the cube to the world. Now, you select the cube. On the click event, you're gonna execute this function. Pretty simple, usual stuff. Here, you take your object 3D, exactly the same definition as you can do in, in jQuery. On here, you double, not double the size, but you multiply the size by 20%. And this is exactly what we have done. It is pretty cool to have the um, mouse function, let's say, not the mouse function, but the mouse um, event in 3D. Why? Because you can do easy UI with that. Very easy UI. Many people are doing it like, um, I don't know, you do your UI in 3D. I don't have any good example. I'm not a UI guy, but they like it a lot. Which kind of event can you support? You can support click. Double click, mouse up, mouse down, mouse over, or mouse out. So pretty much all the events related to the mouse. So as you can see, we take jQuery API very seriously. It's important. It is important for usability and much easier to learn. Very, very, well, well I said it enough. Yeah, new demo. Click. Oh, I need some song. There is a song. On here, you got a 3GS, uh, not a jQuery histogram based on the sound. Not much, but 50, 40 lines of JavaScript for this one. So you got the histogram. The histogram is real time, by the way. So 40 lines. Oh, another one, which is funny. If the internet works, the internet works, pretty cool. And you got a Doom character, this guy. And you can control that this way with a keyboard. This, only 50 lines of JavaScript. Uh, basically, all that is uh, explained in my blog if you want to know more about the source or the sources uh, online on the demo. Oh, this one, let's hope it's gonna work. So that's another WebRTC stuff. I gonna punch this guy with that. So you see the eyeballs, which is almost localized. I punch before, pretty cool. Usually the other one works, or you can punch the guy this way. 50 hertz, I don't know if you know, 60 hertz. So that means that I display the 3D, undo the image recognition to do that on WebRTC in 60 hertz. The web start to be real cool, if you ask me. You punch the guy. That way, if you want, you can do sport. Git doesn't tend to do a lot of sport. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me come back to this. Oh, no, I will do that later. The, uh, you can play a lot with this. You can play in the GS console. You can do many interesting stuff. So what are we looking at on the screen right now? That's like a mini game. The very first mini game I did, it's 140 line. So that's why it's bigger than the others. I'm gonna show you some part, some piece of this code. This way you can have some idea on how to code jQuery. 
But oh, by the way, all that is published on MIT Life Science. You can do whatever you want with it. So you control the small ball. As you can see, the ball is not exactly correct. The ball, the grid ball, doesn't seem to operate well. That's another problem. Let's see some code of it. So what we have seen here, we have a tube, several balls inside, and we are playing with that. Pretty cool. How do we do a tube? We need the tube first, right? The key here is to understand that a tube is like a cylinder, but you are inside. So you do a cylinder and you are inside. It's not too hard, right? You got everything just there. You create the cylinder, key query create cylinder. Not too hard. And you, you get a variable named tube. Tube geometry, geometry, flip. And you got a tube which is inversed. So you can look inside. You just have to put the camera inside and you have a tube inside of a cylinder instead of cylinder. Now, how do we do the advancing? The, we progress in this tube. In fact, that's a trick. We do not move. It's a bit like, uh, I don't know if you know, yeah, Matrix Bambi Doodle. There is a, a given point, you take a spoon and say, mm, there is no spoon. It's a bit like that. There is no move here. We are just moving the texture. That's an old trick. How to move the texture? Pretty simple as well. You take the texture, you go in the material of it, or you do texture scrolling. Here, you will change the offset on the texture by 0 to every time you render the image. On this way, because you change the offset Y, you're going to have the impression that everything is going for what? But that's just an illusion. Computer graphics is a lot about that. Illusion and uh, small tricks. This one is uh, how to make it wavy. I don't know if you have noticed, but it's going a bit like seasick uh, kind of stuff. It's simple. You change every point of the tube. Uh, the, the, the point in 3D I call vertex. Don't ask me why. So you do that, tube, geometry, vertex animation, because you want to move your point or your new object. And here you put the formula on it. So this formula is just a wavy tube, cosinus. Oh, forget about this. Now we want to move the player. So to move the player, that's pretty simple. You got a tube, you want to move the angle of the player. That's all we need. So we use a player, we use a tQuery keyboard plugin, and when you press right, I'm gonna go to the right with, by changing the angle by this amount. When you press left, I change the angle by minus the same amount. Not too hard. Um, this is basically, this small code is basically that. I mean, I like to make love with it. <laughs> All right. So we move the player. Let me show you some extension. The extension. So the, all that was for what? Why do I do all those game on all those small demo? Mainly to see how tQuery reacts in the field. If you do only the framework and you don't do any demo, it doesn't work because you don't know if your framework is suitable for what you want to do. So I did quite a bunch of plugins that I will show you. And the purpose of that is to see how tQuery reacts in the field. So this one, you simply, you can write inside 3D, and that's very simple. Let me, can I show the code? I'm not sure that I can show you the code in there. Yeah, that's not big enough. That's not big enough. <laughs> up, up. This line. Create text, tQuery is fun, scale by uh, one divided by four, add to world. I like the add to world. This guy I got as, a, as an add to as well. So it's pretty short code. This was tQuery text. Already, okay, I won't do that again. You can do shape. What is a shape is exactly the same stuff that you got in Canva. In Canva, you can do begin path, 
uh, you put point, you do Bezier, you do line, you do box. There is the exact same scalability query. So this example is a heart. So all that is pretty easy to do as well. You just do the Bezier to do all that. The Valentin car. So this car is doing what you see here. Oh, basically, the playground is uh, uh, something quite interesting. It's you. This is online, and you can type your code live in there, and this this will change. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna do something here. So hello, we got hello, and here we're gonna say web rebels. On its online, you can play with a jQuery like that very easily. The link is on the website. On the, do whatever you want. You can see here some CSS selection, jQuery, uh, pound, heart. You're going to select your heart because you have an ID heart just there. Also, all the CSS selection is gone. And you can play online. Don't be scared. You can add on sub object. What do I mean by that is, at the beginning, I created a cube. Then I have created a sphere, and I have subtracted the sphere from the cube. You can do that. Once again, that's super easy to do. DOM elements. If it's load, it does load. Excellent. So you can click on the 3D. You can do over. This one is press and press down. Simple stuff. My teapot, yet another example, fireball, gonna come. So that's pure shader material. So all this is computed live inside the graphic card. On the MD2 characters, this one we're gonna have some more fun with it. Load, all right. So that's the same guy that we have seen, but this time we're gonna play. You see this line, character set skill 2. We go here. Go computer, go. And we, so I just pass the line just below. And here we change the, uh, the skin of the guy. You can change maybe skin like that. No skin at all. This skin, this skin, I like the blue guy. Okay. Let's put a weapon in this guy. So for the weapon, you got 11 weapon already. Hop, oh, you got this weapon. You don't like it. You want a bigger weapon, smaller. Okay, I don't know them all. This one, bigger, I like the big weapon. So everything is moving well. You got already plenty to play, to create a game there. On this one, I like a lot. Every second, you're going to change the guy. And you can still play. So you remember, I don't remember, but that's something like 15 lines to 50 lines to do that. All right. What else can we do? I'm not sure. So yes, currently I've got 38 plugins. You have seen some of them already. And um, yeah, I've said that already. Anything else to leave it on that? I think that's my last slide. So, what you have seen is a jQuery. I, it allows two things 3GS forward plus jQuery API usability. That seems like a real good recipe when you see the result, at least to me, because the code is short. It's it got a lot of good principles, something you got error detection quite well, you got um, bunch of assets already done. So you can, this get you started quite fast. The code, everything is under MIT. You got something on GitHub and you can use the, the playground that I have shown you. And that's all. Well, 30 minutes, too fast. Yeah, applause. <laughs> yeah. Question. One. They are this way.
Hi, I was just wondering, uh, what yes. about the relationship between objects? For example, you had, can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Yeah. Uh, for example, the pillars. Could you, for example, how would you set the characters not to be able to walk through pillars? And <laughs> this is collision yes. and physics. Collision yeah. and physics in 3D is not easy. Very hard, in fact. Uh, <laughs> and currently it's not down. There is something called uh, Fizz, uh, which is basically on top of AmoJS, which himself is BulletJS converted to from C++ to JavaScript. So this is the information for the specialist. Uh, in a very short and succinct way, physics gonna physics on collision, phys both are completely related, gonna come in something like a month. It's already coded for 3JS, but it's not yet properly integrated inside a T query. Any other question? Come on. And I had to go back. <laughs> now <laughs> Hey, uh, what's the? Does it work on a mobile at all? Uh, all right. So, in fact, in fact, it does. All right. I have an iPad, and I have plenty of time, so I'm gonna get the iPad. Um, believe it or not, but WebGL does work on the iPad. That's why I got the iPad. It doesn't work on other computers, though. so it works on iOS, on iPad. The main issue with it is what? Is because it uses some, let's say, private feature of the um, iOS, you cannot really sell that on the App Store. And this is a big problem. But it does work. Let me show you. Do I have something? Oh, yes, this one, for example. This is a mini game I already did, so. No internet. So, pick me, pick me when I'm out. I'm gonna put the internet on this. And this is working pretty well. For example, have you seen, remember the car stuff? The car stuff. So, this demo. Something quite interesting, if you ask me. Okay, I'm gonna show you here, but this is working on the iPad. This is a game that I did. Marble soccer, or some physics, by the way. Not good physics, but. Oh, internet. Internet is going. It's working pretty well. <laughs> With the internet, all right. All right, you got internet. This is working at 20 FPS on the iPad. Uh, so you can move exactly as the iPad, and uh, you got some noise as well. You got some physics, but limited physics, not something not too serious. Nice, but not too serious. This one is working at 20 FPS on the iPad. On the... Let me show you the car. The car that you have seen at the beginning is working at 40 FPS on this iPad. This is working at four. With internet, it's working at 40 FPS. It's supposed to work. All right. This one is working at 40 FPS. So the device got good support, but Apple doesn't want to enable it for now. Reason unknown to me. Other questions? No? What? Another one. Great. Repeat? Um, how do you do feature testing? Which the GL feature, extension? Something is... like how do I detect if WebGL is uh, available? Yeah. Well, there is a small code. You try to create a Canva, and after that, you try. No, no, I'm, I mean GL extensions. GL extension? Well, there is, uh, apparently, you know, but uh, there is. Uh, you can try to access the extension. If it doesn't work, you don't have it. <laughs> so the stuff we saw there was there was a lot of um, uh, the, 
the object model system, right? Sort of adding things to a scene and letting them interact with each other. Yes. What's the API around doing stuff with the shaders? Is there an abstraction there or, or is it no. just, no? No, 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 no. no. But shaders, as a, you cannot really abstract it. I mean, this is a different language. You cannot, uh, you can learn it. It's not that hard. It depends on uh, how experienced you are already. But um, no, I haven't done that. Uh, nobody has ever done it. So, so if you got idea on how to do it, uh, we'll be delighted to hear. Well, I, I don't know much about uh, WebGL. At what point yeah. would you have to go to a shader? Uh, when, uh, to do all that? Uh, not one shader. Not one matrix as well. Because people are scared of matrix. You do complex matrix. We got other questions. And uh, you don't have to do matrix. No mathematics there. Just. Uh, Specialization of point in 3D, something like X, Y, Z, no more. Yes? Sort of a related question. Um, in examples like the car or yeah. the Doom character, yeah. one thing that wasn't clear to me was at what level of this sort of multi-layer stack is an object like the car being coded? It seems to me the car is actually being implemented as a plugin. Exactly. And so at the tQuery level, you're only able to move it around and stuff like that, but you can't actually define the car without no. dropping down to 3JS? All right. Many things on this question. First, the car itself is not inside tQuery, that's inside the plugin of tQuery. So it's a subtle part. Uh, after that, can you, for example, take other example on do other model? You can take other models that you got in Blender. Suppose you, are, you know how to use Blender. You take your, uh, apparently I have to go. <laughs> Uh, so you take your model, you export it in a, in a given format that we understand in 3GS, and after that, you can do your own plugin. Plugins are real simple. You, or you can take my plugin um, to, as an example. You, you look how Jerome is doing the car. All right, I'm beginner in tQuery, I don't know. I'm going to copy uh, this plugin because the code is all commented. Another question there? Delighted to have questions. So, when you say that, for instance, the car example here is yeah. forty lines, was it? Um, does that include the plugins as well, or is no. that <laughs> forty lines? No, no, without no, no, the plugins. No, no. This includes. Uh, I don't know exactly for that, but no, this includes the world 3 js the whole tQuery on a bunch of plugins, uh, maybe three or five of them. But when I say 40 lines, I say the amount of lines that you cut on top of the plugin. Right, because it would be interesting to see what those 40 lines actually are if you're using a plugin. You won't, well, I can tell you, <laughs> I'm gonna say that. You won't draw a single uh, triangle red on the screen, just there, in pure WebGL. That's 250 lines. If you put all that, you probably around, I don't know, 8,000 lines. No, 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 but, but I'm thinking you're, you, you wrote earlier that this example was 40 lines of, yes. of t -curing. If you do pure web gel, 8,000 uh, 8, lines. Yeah, but I'm wondering what are those 40 lines? If, oh, if, you want the most, 40 lines? Yeah, if, yeah, yeah, if you saw All right. If, if saw. most of the car and such is in the is in the plugin, then what do you actually do in the script? All right, so view source. So here you see that's an annotated source, so that's a lot more than 40 lines, but it's because of all the comments. No, no, okay. Let me put it differently, guys. Like I'm lying. Oops, annotated source for the win. So you got the number of lines here. You start at 40 because before that you got, uh, oh, here you got a bunch of all the extension here. Don't be scared by that. The, uh, require JS gonna handle this. It's because this is my code and I don't use require JS when I code. For you, you're gonna use require JS and all that gonna be automatically loaded for you. And you can uh, optimize that in production. Quite important with R the JS. So, you start here at 40, you create the world. So I have to improve the size. You create the world. Here you do effect composer vignette finish. What is this? You see that sort of black hair, here and here. That's what we call the past effect. Still have five minutes. 
uh, that's what we have a post effect. This post effect here is called vignette. So you add this effect with only this. Then you set up the renderer. It's start to be super complex already. The renderer to enable the shadow. The shadow is what you see. Let me show you the shadow. Here, here. You need to compute this stuff. This is dynamic. The car got one as well. Can you almost see it? Yes. So you enable the shadow. What do you do next? You add the lights. You uh, create the ambient lights. You create the directional lights. This is what you got. Without lights, you don't see anything. It is all black. So you did the lights. This one is quite special. This is the light which actually project the shadow. That means that depending on the position of this light, the shadow got there, both shadow going to be different. And you can move the light as well if you want to do. If you move the light, the shadow going to move. It's dynamic, that's what I meant. And after that, here and you create the ground, create grass ground with a texture, you repeat. All that is explained just here, by the way. And uh, yes, crack car, crack car. <laughs> see, very small, but you can see, you can go and see the source. Uh, you can, oh, here, I it is because I got good default. Here, you can uh, you can exactly a jQuery, right? You if you do the normal stuff, the default stuff, it's very short. But all the flexibility is perfectly exposed behind. You can put a bunch of example, a bunch of option here. Very simple. You got, I don't know, maybe 10, I don't remember. Here you add the car to the, to the world, create the camera control. Camera control is the fact uh, you see the camera is following your car. That's called camera control. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, this one. Interesting. If you got start, touch start, then I control the car by device orientation. That means that when you play on iPad, you obviously, I cannot, no, I cannot use the keyboard. So you go left, right, and you control the car. Too bad it doesn't work. And after that, here, I create the arch. So you see the kind of road that you got. Here, you got the material, and I create the torus. Five torus. So a torus is like a guard of round. This is it. Basically, this is not an arch. This is a torus. Let me show that to you. That's going to be the end. If you go real far, you're going to leave the world soon. All right, we are leaving the world. We are flying now. And you see, that's actual torus below. But you don't see because you're on top of the grass. So that's pretty cool. Once again, a trick that nobody knows almost. Okay, that's the end of my talk, I think. Bye. Thank you, Jerome.